including the Japanese. They're focused on the TPP right now. The president's been all over the lot on that, and you heard yesterday that he's not going to do it unless he gets a significantly better deal. Nobody in Washington thinks that's going to happen. Uh, they could do it, but why would anybody offer the U.S. something when the U.S. dropped out? Uh, so at this point, it seems like a non-starter, Alex. Well, there is talk that an NAFTA deal could be reached in the next few weeks. What's the latest on that? Well, in about an hour from now, the ministers from Canada and Mexico will join the U.S. trade representative here in Washington to, to continue negotiations. No more hopping around capitals. Uh, they're in what they call a permanent session right now because they think they could be close. And it may be because they're starting to feel some calendar pressure. Uh, the U.S. is negotiating under the so-called Fast Track Authority. That expires July 1st. The president has requested that it be renewed. He has to submit some reports on NAFTA by June, and Congress is getting restive about that. If he does, it'll be renewed, but then you run right into the Mexican presidential election on July 1st. How will they feel after that election? And then you get into a technical difficulty. The president would like to have NAFTA ratified, approved by this Congress, Republicans in charge, Democrats may win in November. To do that, he would have to submit the deal by late June, probably, because Congress goes out of session at the end of December, and Democrats may be in charge when it reopens in January. So so a tough calendar ahead for them if they want to get something done. Watch today if they say anything about autos. That's the key stumbling block. And if they can get past that, there's a feeling they could get a deal done by the deadlines. All right, Bloomberg's Michael McKee, thank you very much. Uh, Henry, are we in a world where we're factoring in a benign uh, trade environment, potentially not as bad as we thought? Marcus, price it in? Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's going to be more and more the focus. And let's... Let's call a spade a spade. The issue that I think we're dealing with here is really ownership of technology in China, and that's the underlying theme here. Um, there are other trade issues, NAFTA, for example, and I think what we're going to focus on is really getting NAFTA behind us and focusing on the Chinese issue. Um, another thing we were just you, on that last segment um, to, uh, to focus on is the the TPP deal following Korea. Let's if you think about the storyline, um, Trump gets a political win with Korea. Now with that, U.S. involvement could potentially be lower in the area. Now that TPP, the timing is actually quite ironic mm -hmm. as we're growing our debt balance, our need to issue issue debt. I wonder if there was a conversation with Japan, us coming back into TPP as some sort of an agreement for Japan to continue buying U.S. debt as the reserve. Uh, uh, as us as a reserve currency has been pushed down a little bit. Yeah, they've been selling for about five months at this point. Um, Peter, the other, though, implication of a trade war are higher prices. And we've seen that with aluminum, steel, and now that's filtering in through sanctions uh, as well. What's the feed through through higher